Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Benjamin from AWS. We're here in Tel Aviv, Israel. Today I'm joined by David from Cisco. Hi, David. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, David, I think Cisco is a household name, um, but tell us what part of Cisco you're in. So we're part of Cloudlock. Cloudlock was a cyber uh, security company that was acquired by Cisco in 2016. And uh, we're now part of the Security Cloud Group and um, we are a cybersecurity company specialized in the cloud. Okay, so I believe as part of that proficiency, you have analysts that, that need to run reports and that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today. Uh, tell us about the requirements that those analysts had for what they would want to run on AWS. So those analysts were supposed to present uh, reports, assessment reports to customers. And um, in order to do that, first they had to manually ask the engineers to create the various AWS resources that are required to produce those reports. And so we didn't want to, uh, to give them access to the uh, Amazon console for compliance reasons, security reasons, and uh, we had to come up with an automatic way to produce those reports. Okay, so you had a manual process, you wanted to convert that into something automatic. What does that look like? So um, we thought about leveraging the internal communication tool that we, uh, that we were using at the time, it okay. was Slack. And uh, we're kind of uh, using the slash command, which is one of the features that uh, Slack has okay. in order to communicate uh, with external services, just like AWS. Okay, so Slack slash command is a way for you to trigger things that are happening outside of Slack. Um, so so how, does that, how does that tie in with AWS? So the uh, slash command is actually uh, sending a request to the uh, API gateway, okay. uh, sending uh, the command there that the uh, analysts want to do. So for example, the customer name. Um, and then the API gateway is forwarding the request to a generic Lambda router. This okay. router is, uh, is used in order to have some kind of generic uh, gateway so that we can send uh, and invoke any other Lambda that we want based on the command. Uh, it's also a way for us to uh, validate uh, security based on the token that we sent uh, into, into Slash here. Oh, okay. So I think this way you're kind of getting around the fact that API Gateway requires to be a public endpoint and so it's open. So you need to enforce security at some point. And so you're choosing to do that by having this Lambda function authenticate the token that you have on the, on the Slack function command, so uh, slash command. So I see that there are two Lambda functions, so you kind of built this like a platform, right? This is, this, is, this is deciding what to do, this is actually executing what those engineers use to execute on behalf of the analysts. Yeah, exactly. So once we authenticate uh, the, the token, we also validate that the user can actually uh, trigger uh, the second Lambda. And, uh, and we then trigger this, invoke this uh, Lambda function who's actually doing the job. So okay. the job here in, in that case is to spin up a EMR cluster that includes all the steps that are required to produce a report. So those steps involve uh, some Spark job, uh, some uh, ECS uh, calls. This is for our internal uh, services that are microservice based. And at the end, uh, the last step is actually uh, producing the report itself and sending that to S3. Okay, so the report ends up on S3, um, but I imagine that the analyst that put in the command asking for it isn't sitting around waiting for it because it, it could take a while. So um, how are they notified that the report is ready and, and waiting for them? Yeah, so the whole process here is uh, completely asynchronous, and uh, there are two major um, uh, consequences of that. First of all, if something is failing, uh, the user don't know. So for that, uh, we integrated with CloudWatch, so that the, uh, the EMR sends uh, metrics to make sure that everything is working properly. Okay. And on the other hand, at the end, in order to get the, the result back, uh, EMR, the last step of EMR is sending the, uh, uh, the, the address, the URL of the F3 object here to Slack back. Okay, this is an ephemeral EMR cluster? Yes, exactly. Okay, so uh, when it's done with its last step, it tears down automatically. Yeah, we wanted this whole process to be as cost efficient as possible. So that's why we, we use Lambda function that we only, you only pay for the, uh, the, the few seconds that uh, each, uh, each Lambda is running. And the same thing for EMR. Some of the reports are taking one hour, but some others are only taking 20 minutes. Okay. So that final step of the EMR job is notifying Slack. Slack is telling the analyst, your report is now ready. How do they access it? So we didn't want, of course, to, uh, to make this bucket public. Right. Um, so, and we didn't want to give them access to, uh, to the bucket uh, either. 
So we came up with the solution of uh, using an Nginx uh, as a proxy to those files. So actually the user is uh, interacting with Nginx, Nginx is requesting uh, the file from S3. Oh, I understand. So Slack command is getting a response saying, your report is now ready, but the URL that they're receiving is a URL that they would view through Nginx, and that's how you're locking down the object on S3. Yeah, exactly. So of course, Nginx is also protected with uh, some VPN, and uh, that way we also can make sure to audit every file that is downloaded. Oh, understood. So I see that you also have Cisco WebEx teams here. W what is that? Yeah, so at the time, we were using Slack as an internal communication tool, but now that we're part of Cisco, we're kind of migrating to new tools, and one of the tools is actually Cisco WebEx Teams. But it's actually the same idea, and it's working the same way that Slack does. Okay. So the same, in the same uh, spirit, uh, Cisco WebEx Teams is actually sending a request to the API Gateway, and at the end, EMR is returning uh, and, and posting back the URL. Uh, to these Cisco WebEx teams. Okay, so you were using Slack because that was the common language that people spoke within the organization. Yes. That changed, um, but but uh, you could just plug out Slack, plug in something else. Um, I love it. So tell me, um, how many times were you running these reports uh, before you had this mechanism and you were manual? So before that, we're only running that a couple of times a week because it was really, uh, first we're dependent on engineers and second, uh, the whole process really was really uh, uh, heavy in terms of resources. We wanted to, uh, each step was actually taking a lot of time. Understood, and then how, how many times are you running it now that you have an automatic mechanism? Now it's dozens of times run by a couple of uh, analysts, but it can be scaled to many more, many, mm. way more. Wonderful. So I really like this story, and, and I think the reason why is because this is something that we hear a lot from customers, is they have certain audiences that they don't want them directly interfacing with the CLI, directly interfacing with the AWS console. And so it's with tools like this, in this case, you wanted to spin up an EMR cluster, it could have been many other things. In this case, it was Slack or Cisco WebEx Teams, it could be something else. You can just tie that in very easily and then give them a way to spin up resources or, or request them something to be done in AWS, be notified when it's done, and they're now using AWS. So I love this. Thank you. Thank you for working us through this. Thank you, thank you for sharing. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.